Hello everyone, this is Pugalicious. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and share this. My goodness, please share. It, 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 I would very much so appreciate it. And also, check out the Discord. It, it, it's a little slow at the moment, but if you would join, you would most certainly um, pick up pace, if you will. But anyway, we, we, we will continue where we left off last time, from chapter 2, into now chapter 3. Now, chapter 3 is the shortest chapter, so in about five minutes or so, this, set, this will be over. But anyway, let's press on. Chap chapter 3. Ephraim and I were back in the chariot. We begrudgingly left Magal's Gazette, wishing we could stay longer. But we had to see Elon. It's what progress asked of us. All around, we saw this ethereal black and white tunnel. With stars all about us as we traveled to Elon proper. As we got closer to Elon, the end of the tunnel began to shone with pure white light. I had Okia with Ephraim once more, admiring the eyeful that he was. We entered Elon proper and we saw the holy city of, of Jehaisalom. The city itself was just as magnificent as described in the holy gospel. But seeing it made the description all the more pleasing. Ephraim insisted we hurry to the center of the city to see what progress wanted us to see. We walked to the center of the city where progress was, and the most magnificent thing in all of progress's creation. In front of us we saw the holy light of progress shine a brilliant white with Ben Yorners circling all about progress seeing Holy, 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 for none shall subdue his glory. Let thy light and let thy thoughts answer from him. Let thy views be not grim. Instinctively, me and Ephraim bowed before the majesty of progress. Praisingly, we exclaimed, Glory unto you, the eternal and most gracious one from which all creation and all lesser gods derive, deceive to claim to be. Let your truth be expressed into every being of life, and have it be that lesser god, and have it be that the lesser gods of Allah, Yahweh, Buddha, and every other be subdued under your power. We then arose and heard progress spoke with soundings of a hundred ocean storms. My beloved creations, ye are great and well defined in thy loyalty towards me. I ensure thee, Andrew, thou shalt be sent to Mark Gazette when thee are taken by the Prince of Nye. Hearing this gave me a feeling of great comfort when I then realized the journey was then, en was then ended. Looking to Ephraim, I wondered if I would see him again, to which he answered, Oh, my dear Andrew, I shall always be with thee. Let thee not be saddened by the thought of going away from here. He then went towards my neck 
and in a deep voice declared, I will always be with thee in my, in my house of Gazette. And then gave me a bite of love. I closed my eyes and then reopened my eyes to find I was back at the forest with a bite of love on my neck. And that is the end of The Divine Orphan. It has truly been a lovely journey I've had with you. I hope you will also enjoy this journey. Now, I think what we'll do next, because what I've done is I've collected a bunch of stories from my homeland and condensed them into a book. I think that's what we'll do next time. But anyway, until then, or you can tell me what you think I should do. But anyway, until then, this has been Puggalicious. So long. Hey everyone, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the future. And as always, I love Poblan.